Yeah, and, and, that, and that's the other beautiful thing about acoustic instruments. And if anybody knows more about that, it's you. Um, the, the, the beautiful thing about acoustic instruments is, that, is the fluctuation in the tunings and in the voicings, mm -hmm. um, it, whether it be a guitar or a piano or marimbas, vibes, whatever, whatever it is. Um, and, and, if, and if you get your vocal just absolutely pitch locked, um, what it does is it makes those other instruments sound worse <laughs> when, when they really need to sound better. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Um, and it almost, you know, um, I can't let anybody touch my vocals. Um, I know it takes me a lot longer to produce a track because of it, but I just don't trust anybody else with them because yeah. what they're doing is micromanaging the tuning of one thing. Uh -huh. I'm macro managing the tuning of mm. 16 things. That's you know, a good sure. description of what a producer does. Kind of always like your job to step back and see the whole picture. Yeah, and, and I want you know I want the kids to get along. You know I want the <laughs> bass to get along with the with the kick, and I want the snare to get along with the acoustic. And um, but but those are the you know the, they always say the devils in the details, and in what we do, that's exactly right. It's it's the million little things, the million little subtleties that give somebody goosebumps when they hear something. Hmm. Yeah. You know, it's, it, it's that, it's the, it's, it's the indescribable things. Right. You know, maybe somebody will say, Oh, I love the beat or, Oh, I love the, the, the string run, or I love the pitch of this or whatever it is. But, yeah. um, but what they don't understand is the, the underlying interaction, it's, it's interaction of yeah. sound and motion and, well, and yeah, the way it's like, that we can, it's like you love the vocal because of the, what the drums are doing. Or you yes. love the drums because of what the vocal is doing. Like people don't typically think that way until, until you start producing. And then you realize, oh, wow. Like I remember um, when I was a kid, I listened um, to an old Amy Grant record. Um, I think it's called Lead Me On. Is that is that the name of yes. it? Yes. And it was on vinyl. And I'm like, I mean, how old am I? Like I'm a kid, you know, so I know nothing about music. But I remember hearing this bass, and I'm just like, dude, that bass sounds so amazing. And it just had this punch. <laughs> amazing. It was just like, it was just like, you know, hitting you in the chest. And um, I I couldn't figure it out. And and so when I started doing music, I, I just always remember how did that bass sound that way? And it wasn't until way many years later <laughs> that I realized. It was because the kick drum was playing with the bass, which <laughs> <Yes. laughs> is like obvious now. But you know, it's just it's just funny how um, your perspective changes uh, in these things as you produce things. Absolutely, absolutely. Oh man. Well, dude, I, I have another question about just one more question on music. Um, so we've got a lot of listeners that are like we talked about doing music and recording in their bathrooms and, and, you know, buying a computer for $300 and making amazing albums. So for a guy like you, that is pretty successful in terms of, I mean, you're working for major labels and doing decent budget albums. Um, does that mean that you are, are, are always working on analog boards and using real rooms um, whereas opposed to, I'm kind of in between, like I'm, mm -hmm. I'm the doing so much of it, um, uh, in a computer using convolution reverbs, using all yes. these like amazing spatial things that give you that basically don't require you to go rent out a crazy expensive studio on a low budget. Um, but then I'm also, you know, I'm actually still using the sidecar Neve that you, uh, that yes. you sold me. And um and I love I it. I want it back. Yeah, sorry man, you're not getting it back. <laughs> <laughs> Dang it. That that it's, is one of the biggest mistakes I've ever made. <laughs> it seriously is like one of the only pieces I've sold off so many things because of all the plugins that that, that have come out. But mm -hmm. I'm curious for you um that you know typically you have a budget to to make the choice. Um what what are you doing with this whole analog versus digital stuff? Man, great question. You know, and these are things I think about all the time. You know, I've gone every single route, you know, through the years. I mean, I, I you know, I bought an SSL um, back in Nashville, 72 channel G, um, and put it in an expensive room, and that became my hideout for a few years. Um, and then, you know, in California, um, I cut that console into kind of pieces yep. and uh -huh. brought 16 channels of it with me. Um, and made records in my garage yeah. right there. I mean, for, for a 
good amount of records, you know, there. Now I'm in a, a little room that I just kind of built out above my garage, you know, kind of a thing. Um, <clears throat> to me, you know, when we were coming up, that we had no other choice. You know, we had to record in a studio mm -hmm. um, because you, you couldn't convert 16 tracks at the same time yeah. digitally. You know, we, we had to take it to tape and... and Man, I, I miss, I, I don't miss the, the tediousness of it or, you know, especially when it comes to cutting vocals of having to rewind and wait. Right. I do like, you know, being in the digital world there. Um, but but there's, there's something of an awe and a reverence of going into a studio that we've lost today. Today, mm -hmm. I mean, it used to be you'd, you'd bring a band into a... a, a an awesome room and that they would walk in with these gigantic bug eyes and they were engaged from the second they walked in to yeah. the second you walked out. Yeah. Now you bring kids into the exact same magical room with a beautiful vintage Neve and pool techs everywhere. Yeah. And these kids are on their phone the whole time doing That's game and funny. find anybody, you know, they're just, they could care less. That's you know? funny. I, yeah. Um, so it, it, the mystique of it is gone now um, in, in a lot of ways, which, which kind of makes me sad. Uh, I, miss, I miss it, but the mystique's not gone for me. Hmm. You know, I still respect that room. Yeah. Um, and, you know, I, I'm, I don't want to come here and, like, plug everything, but I do have to plug a studio that's in, uh, believe it or not, Cisco, Texas, which, have you ever heard of Cisco? Did you ever drive through it? Um, it sounds many, familiar, many but I don't okay. remember, know anything about it. So it's not it. Frisco. A lot of people go, oh, yeah, Frisco. There's an Ikea there. It's all... No, no. Cisco, Texas, is uh, it's about two hours outside of Fort Worth uh -huh. on the way to Abilene. It's in the middle of absolute nowhere. Yeah. And, uh, and therein lies the most magical studio I've ever been in. Mm -hmm. And I think, Eric, I've been in them all. Yeah. I mean, in, in terms of oh, like yeah. the big rooms, I've been yeah. in Abbey Road uh, so many times I can't count. Yeah. Um, every studio in Nashville and, and for the most part, LA and New York too. Um, but it's all about Cisco. But, man. And you know, I mean, Cisco, I think there's 800 people live in Cisco. <laughs> it's, it's like tumbling tumbleweeds. Um, they're the only restaurant there. And I do have to say it's, it's, it's a Mexican restaurant and it is ridiculously good. Um, so thank thank the Lord for that. But there's nothing else there. There's no Starbucks. There's no yeah. Uh, but also there's you know there's no show coming in town that night that is going to distract you that you want to see like when you're recording in L.A. Yeah. And there's no five you know new restaurant. No. Nope, that there will all... be in New York or London. It's like it's you okay, and the music, we're in the man. Mexican again. Yeah. Yep. Let's get in the music and and uh, that I mean this room was just designed to record music in and. Uh, and so I, I, I love, I love every single minute that I get to spend there. But I'd say most of the time I'm sitting right here, just like you're sitting right there. You know, I, I probably cut most guitars, um, almost all leads here. I try to get as many as I can there because I mean that that studio they have everything you could hmm. ever dream of. Um, but a lot of times maybe there won't be time to get to the vocals because you want more of a you know compelling track to. Yeah present to your singer what about drums do you do you ever do drums there or do you always do drums somewhere else you know i've i've i think over the past um uh, past year and a half everything that i've cut i've cut out there with the exception of uh, there's a record that i'm working on right now um that i cut at the sound emporium hmm. um which is a, a this magical room mm -hmm. it's a beautiful neve console and um you know it's I don't know. I don't know. I mean, I feel like rooms are our personalities. Now, at the same time, my favorite drum track of all time, um, I cut in that dining room of the house we had in Carlsbad. Running really? 16 little lines out into that thing. Well, and you that know, dining so room the, was very, very live. It was extremely live. And uh, which, you know, I, I like live. Um, but I, I, I don't know that I'll ever be able to get drums to sound like that again. Huh. You know, so I don't know what it was about it. Yeah. You know, if it was, you know, uh, you know, I don't know if you remember this or not, but, you know, the, the kiddo that was assisting me, Alex, we used to have to hide him in the bushes yeah. so that he, when the police came, he would run in and tell us to stop. Yeah. You know? yep. <laughs> well, this so. is good news for all the, you know, the listeners that are out there just going, you know, how am I supposed to make great drum sounds? 
And uh, most people have, uh, you know, garages, and most people have living yes. rooms. And, uh, I mean, that's what it was. I mean, you ran cables out of your garage and into your living room. I remember room. even having to put cables. I, mean, I broke every rule. You know, I had XLRs going into yeah, XLRs. Double, to, triple, to, yeah, it's like, what am to I get it, yeah. doing here, you know? And then your um, wife, I'm sure, is real stoked that you got a drummer in the in the living room, right? You know, that woman is... I don't know what I don't know how I'd make it without her. She was so gracious. I don't either. You know, I always kind of look at her and be like, "Hey, do you feel like taking a walk?" And she's like, "Oh, you want to cut drums? I get it." <laughs> <It's> like, <laughs> oh my god! Yeah, I get it. But oh, you know, to dude. all of your um, to all of your listeners, I think when you're recording, it's recording drums is my favorite thing to do um, because literally you are trying to get you know you're not recording individual. You're really recording one thing. You know, there's it's the drum kit. It's yeah. one thing, but I think what happens is uh, people get distracted and start focusing way too hard on a tom sound yeah. and a tom sound instead of the drum kit as a whole. Mm-hmm. Um, and for me, it's you know, um, and maybe a lot of your listeners already know this. You've just you've got to get the phase right. Once you get the phase right, then you've got the sound. Mm-hmm. I mean, you could record drums outside, inside, on a roof, in an attic. In a in a awesome room, it doesn't matter if you've got the phase right. Mm-hmm. That's it, they're going to sound great. Yeah, you know, and because then they're they're all getting along, and there's and then all of a sudden that kick has that that thump instead of sounding like a poof, you know, and the snare yeah. does have that bite instead of disappearing every time, you know, you, you hit it, um, and and the cymbals get to live, and uh, most of the things I produce I don't mix. I send to somebody else, um, and I I don't want to you know, waste their time with deciding, Hey, you know, um, you know, how much sample did he want versus the real, um, uh, record recording. I, I just go ahead and I, I print that stuff. Okay. And I print it on in. So the mixer at the end of the day, will get a kick. He'll get a snare. He'll get a hat. He'll get two toms. Dude, that, um, that sounds so relieving. <laughs> yeah. And, Thinking and about all even, the tracks I get where I'm just like, you know, you got four or five different kicks and, you know, a bunch of samples. It's just... It well, gets, it kills you. And, yeah, and I absolutely. think, it, I think you know, for me, I want my mixer to be in love with their job that day. Yeah. I want them to get my track and go, whoa. Yeah. That's it? This is it? We're down to 32 tracks? Yeah. Okay, let's go to work. Yeah, and, that's cool. And then they can start focusing instead of finding the problems, right. finding the things they like and blowing them up. Yeah. You know? Dude, and, that's you why know, you're I, so good at what you do, man. I mean, that's... That's given me a lot of insight into, because mm. everything you're talking about, you know, I hear it. I hear it in your music. And um, like I said, it's just a, such a compliment to what I do that um, I just I re- appreciate that. So I don't know if those are your secrets, but I feel like there have been some <laughs> good nuggets that you've given me that I, that, uh, that I want to, that I want to take in a little bit more and work on. Um, before we go, I, I have two questions. One, um, I want to ask you about, um, Robert Randolph, because I just listened to some of those tracks. Um, I guess he collaborated with Cla- Clapton, and you yes. you worked on that. And dude, this just the sounds are just so raw and so oh man, they're just <laughs> oh, so good. You. So tell me what what your involvement was in in, in producing that. Yeah, that was that was a uh, quite quite an interesting project that took a really long time. I think it took a year and a half. Um, that, I mean, first of all, you know he's just a, a phenomenal talent and the whole band is just to the nines, you know, just, just ridiculous. Um, but you know, they were very, very busy, you know, touring. So we'd have to kind of go to wherever they were, or mm-hmm. they'd have to come to me whenever they, you know, weren't on a tour, um, and get that thing done. But, but the whole process of, you know, recording that, you know, what is basically, you know, that steel string guitar, um, pedal steel guitar is, is, um, dealing with the fluctuations of some of the intonations, you mm-hmm. know, and, and then deciding, okay, what, what am I going to care about? And then what am I not? Because the guy is just, I mean, he's just a freak, hmm. just a ridiculous freak. And if he, if I'm getting a, a insane performance and I'm dealing with some tuning issues, what are some ways that I can, you know, fix that? And I learned so much uh, specifically about using, you know, dimension tools and chorusing and things like that to help take the width and spread it out so right, that it yeah. would fit in a little bit better. But, you know, I had, it, it, it was, I think I learned a lot and several things 
I was awakened to several different things. Uh, most specifically, the the uh, interaction with Eric Clapton. You know, I I had just um, finished working on um, a, a really successful uh, multi artist Christian recording, and um, it it was a difficult experience for me because nobody cared. None of the artists really wanted to be on it. You know, it was, it was, it was a project that was put out by a label with all these different, obviously various different artists. And well, they were busy and it's not their record. So I'm not going to blame them for not really, you know, caring, but mm -hmm. when you're a producer, you care, you know, you want, you yeah. want somebody to give up, you know, you don't want to have a manager come in and say, Hey, you know what? Um, he or she's going to give you 15 minutes, get it right. You, know, you hmm. don't get all day with this person. You know, you right. got 15 minutes to get, and it's like, really? That's like, do they even know the song? No, no, I haven't even heard the song. Oh, well, they've had gosh. the song for a week, you know, that yeah. kind of a thing. And, <laughs> and, it, and it left me with a, a kind, of, kind of a weird taste in my mouth, I think, um, because, again, you had to almost manufacture the emotion of, of some of those. Now, on that, on that record, um, it, it, well, that case wasn't true with everybody. Um, there, were, there were some that, that came in and really wanted to get there, and I, and I appreciated that. But it, you can imagine me going into the, the studio with Eric, I mean, Eric Clapton is a legend of legends. You know, why is he going to really care to be, you know, on this? Uh -huh. It's not his record, you know? Yeah. Um, and, and I remember I mean, just being scared to death walking into that situation. And, uh, and the, the first thing he says to me is, okay, how are you? How was your flight? Okay, I'm going to make you a tea. And uh he sits down and makes me a tea and, and sits down and he says, Hey, now I've listened to the track. I love the track that you guys have done a great job. How can I help? What can I do? And, uh, and at that point my mind is blown. It's like, well, why would this guy, I'm nobody zero zilch, you know, yeah. um, he's Eric Clapton, you know, wow. and I, I just, now I understand why there's a sir in front of his name. Huh. You know, he is royalty. He, he just, he treated us like gold and, and, wow. uh, and 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 then he he Eric clapped in that track, man. It's just he killed it. But um, it was it was a fun experience. So you yeah. produced the whole album, then? I didn't do that whole record. I think I did seven sides. And what was the name? It? What was the name of that record? Uh, I just listened to a couple tracks from it and it can't remember the name. Man, I don't know. So many years ago. <laughs> well, we'll post. Uh, yeah. yeah. Well, I'll, I'll I'll post a link to that. Um, but that sounds like an amazing experience, and I mean, we're that was a good time. We're basically, you know, seeing a guy who is at the top of his game, um, uh, you, or uh, at the top of the game of just being one of the most successful artists out there. And kind of what you're saying is he cared. While you're watching yeah, all these cared. other people coming into the studio, they're like, yeah, whatever. But this guy cared not not just about the music, but about the people and the interaction. And there's a kind of the, I think that's a little bit of that life and that youthfulness that we're talking about that yeah, is absolutely he was necessary. He stayed the whole day, Eric, wow. the whole day. And yeah. I learned so much about him. And, and, uh, but I, I think it, you know, I'll, I'll never be um, at the superstar status of anything, but much less that. But it, 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 it really teaches you that, you know, um, no matter where you're at, you know, it, it makes people feel better when you treat him nice you know yeah. and uh <laughs> Definitely. he had absolutely no reason to um respect me <laughs> or he'd never even heard of me hasn't heard of me since i'm sure but uh you know what what a, what a great experience you know that was well dude um we let, let's wrap things up but before we do i, I want to ask you um um what uh what you've done recently that we can kind of share with people and then uh, maybe also what, what are you working on right now? You know, I, I kind of started getting that itch again um, a little over a year ago um, of, of uh, going ahead and starting something up. And, and uh, so I did. I started a label called Reaction Worship and, and I got the name from actually um, a sermon that my pastor was given on a Sunday morning just talking about um, how how we react to the goodness of God and what this reaction is and and uh, I kind of got on my phone and went to GoDaddy and typed in 
reaction <laughs> worship. Like, there's no way this is available. It's like, <laughs> Oh, it's available for nine ninety nine, and I kind of reached <laughs> in my pocket and pulled out the credit card. Karen's yep. like, "What are you doing?" I'm like, "I don't know." <laughs> <laughs> and uh, you know, um, kind of started preparing for that and, and dreaming of of the culture that I wanted to create. And then, you know, as as a favor to a friend, um, I, I went and uh, ex- experienced a church in Dallas. Um, that uh, I kind of thought was going to be a, a similar situation where it's like, oh, you know, be an, be an encouraging guy, you know, and say, oh, you guys are doing a great, great job. And um, but Eric, it it uh, it it was a real milestone hmm. in my life just walking into that church because they they have found a way to uh, they, to create a culture that pretty much describes everything that I've spoken about. In this whole conversation, you know, um, they love Jesus and they love people, hmm. and uh, and they got this band that uh, I mean, you're just you're just shaking your head, but but what I kept feeling there was just this incredible amount of joy that hmm. um, a, a lot of times I don't really feel at church, hmm. you know, and and everywhere I looked, you know, and it's like, man, this is I want to be I want to be a part of this. And um, and so that that's uh, the first record that that we released um, on on this little label um, is that one. It's uh, the name of the church is Upper Room. Man, it's uh, it's one of the favorite things I've ever been blessed and privileged to work on. I'm, I'm extremely proud of them. Cool. Um, the songs coming out of there, I feel, are uh, are extremely relevant and useful. Hmm. And uh, so anyway, I'm I'm really excited about it. Well, awesome. Let's um we'll we'll definitely post a link to that um and that oh, thank that's you. Re- that was released what last week or it was released did? on Friday. Mm-hmm. Okay, awesome, man. Well, um, dude, let's definitely keep in touch. Um, man, please. This, this was really, this was really fun, and it was, was fun fun for thank me you. because you know we're sitting here recording, but um I just loved the opportunity to just ask you a bunch of random questions that I. Th- that I think about all the time um, that, you know, that I get to learn from you. So, well, thanks. Thanks so much, Pete, for joining us. Oh, what an honor to have you. And uh, let's thank you, Eric. Keep in touch. Bye. All right. Take care, man.